Welcome to VNN. I'm Hannah Bernard, and today we have an update from Chris Morrow, who is the CEO of Miraculans Incorporated, which trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol MOM. Now, the company has had a lot of exciting news lately, and so we thought we'd catch up with the man at the helm of the company to get some more insight into the news. So, Chris, thanks so much for being here. Hi, Hannah. Thank you for having me. Great. So we know that Miraculin's pilot program is underway in Ontario and Quebec. But what I want to know is the significance of the program, what the purpose is, and most importantly, what's going to come from it? So the uh, the pilot in uh, Ontario at a pharmacy, ten, a 10 store pharmacy chain called Level Drugs is to help identify the ROI or the return on investment to a pharmacy that has that hold scout uh, clinics in their pharmacy. And the clinic is very simple. We set up a kiosk and customers who are in the pharmacy for a variety of reasons, if they qualify for a scout test, sit down, we scan their arm. Uh, we're scanning a small piece of skin on the underside of the arm. You don't have to fast, we don't draw blood, and we can assess your risk of pre or type two diabetes within 90 seconds. If you're borderline or elevated, we're going to move you, suggest rather you go on to see your physician and get one of three gold standard blood tests done. And uh, as I've mentioned in previous interviews, the diabetic patient is quite valuable to a pharmacy. They spend about $3,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And so if the pharmacy can identify the type two diabetic patient who's walking around, but doesn't know that they're type two because they likely don't have any symptoms. Uh, our stats show about 5% of the marketplace is type two diabetic. Uh, and if the pharmacy can help identify them, not only is it great for that patient, they can start getting treated, but they may come back and shop at that pharmacy and they're worth about $3,000 a year in purchases. The pre-diabetic patient, identified by uh, and confirmed by blood tests, they could spend upwards of $800 a year. So it's a very important uh, test that the pharmacy can offer to the public. While we're doing the pilot, we're also exploring other ways that we can work with the pharmacy to expand their re other reimbursable services in the pharmacy, such as med checks, if someone's on more than three medications, but is getting these medications at different pharmacies, they may not know that, uh, and there may be a contraindication of the medicine, so the pharmacy can do a check and they can bill for that. Pharmacies also offer vaccinations, smoking cessation. Uh, we're exploring other ways to return uh, that moment of contact while we're scanning and screening for diabetes to work with that pharmacy. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what, what comes from the pilot program, Chris. That's really exciting. So, of course, with the Scout device, FDA approval is extremely important for your part of business. So I want to know where you guys are at with the process. It's my understanding that right now you're in the pre-submission phase. So what that means is that you've communicated with the FDA what your plans are for approval, how big the study is, and what you would plan on including in your application. So where are you at with the pre-submission phase and what's going to come from it? So we have communicated with the FDA and our plan is to file a pre-submission with the FDA for what's known as a 510K de novo. The Scout device we believe is safe enough to be classified as a, a class two device and this has certain meanings in the world of the FDA. But the challenge is that there is no predicate device for the Scout. So when this, uh, when this is the case, then a de novo application would be the, the next uh, method for regulatory pathway. We have to file a document with the FDA, numbers, a, a number of documents that outline our argument for the device to be uh, considered a de novo. Yeah. We have to file with them our study plan. Uh, how many patients do we have to include in the scout study and, uh, and basic information about the uh, scout device. So we're, we've outlined uh, that we intend to file this uh, document with the FDA our plan is to do that within the first quarter of calendar 2015 and we're working diligently towards that. If we have a successful response, this will mean that it will be less expensive and will uh, should be less burdensome for us to get the Scout approved and get it uh, offered in the United States. Wonderful. We all know that the FDA approval is a, a tedious one, so good luck with that and, and it's really exciting to hear about the pre-submission. So Chris, thanks again so much for joining us here today at uh, Viral Network News and we look forward uh, to another update from you guys in the near future. Thanks, Hannah. Have a good day. And thanks to all of you for joining us here on Viral Network News. For VNN, I'm Hannah Bernard.